Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I think it's about time, so we should uh, get started. So as I said once again, um, during the lecture, I hope uh, everyone, everyone of you, if you can turn on your camera, that will be the best. And I want this, uh, I want this course or this class to have more discussions and interactions. And that that's the I think that's the the only effective way to learn uh, materials, advanced materials in this uh, in in this level of study. So you you need to think about it. You need to discuss, have a dis have a conversation with your peers, with me, and with yourself in order to actually learn statistical thermodynamics. So that's my uh, point. So I welcome any question at any point. So if you have a, any question, raise your hand using this, uh, raise your hand uh, function in this program, or, or you can just turn on your microphone and uh, speak up it's okay okay it's okay to interrupt me it's okay to post trivial looking questions there is no trivial questions any question is if you don't understand you ask it you you should ask the question this you know this uh it, sometimes some question that you think might be trivial actually could be very profound okay and i I would like to have more discussions and interactions with all of you, with each of you, actually. So this will be the second lecture uh, this semester, and uh, it's actually the first time we, we are going to uh, actually teach, I'm, I'm going to actually teach something, okay? So normally um, the mode I operate this is I don't use, many uh, slides. I mean, I normally use handwriting, okay? So I will share my uh, iPad screen with you. So uh, but because of that, I cannot see everybody. So again, like I said, if you uh, do not recognize, do not recognize my handwriting, think my, um, cannot, I cannot understand my English you are free to interrupt me, stop me anytime, okay? Ask me to uh, re say, rewrite things. Ask me to uh, give an explanation in a different way. It's all okay, okay? Okay, so I'll share my iPad. Now, like I have mentioned in the last lecture, uh, basically this semester will be divided into three different sections for this uh, course. The first part, we will focus on a review of thermodynamics. dynamics. This will provide us a, a solid foundation to understand later on this uh, statistical mechanics. And also some tools, some equations in thermodynamics dynamics will be used again and again in our uh, understanding of statistical thermodynamics. And the second part will be regarding the uh, fundamental laws or fundamental principles of uh, stat statistical mechanics. Uh, we will emphasize its application in equilibrium uh, states in calculating average, or I would say ensemble averaged uh, observables in equilibrium states. That will be the second part. And the third part will concern some applications of uh, statistical thermodynamics. Questions, uh, problems such as IC model regarding phase transition, uh, ideal gas systems, vibrations, uh, different fermion for, uh, boson statistics, and uh, electrolytes will be covered in the third part of this course. Okay, so in the first part, we want to study Thermodynamics, thermodynamics. Okay. And thermodynamics, I think all of you, each of you, uh, all of you have learned these topics in uh, your undergraduate study. 
the thermodynamic sexual concerns is a study of uh, microscopic properties, microscopic. Microscopic equilibrium states. This is actually a very important statement in a sense that when we say thermodynamics, do you know why it's it's called thermodynamics, not thermokinetics, not uh, 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 heat dynamics, things like that? Actually, thermodynamics is a study about changes driven by exchange of energy, energy exchange. And of course, a very common form or, or probably the, 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 the first uh, form of energy exchange realized in our everyday life is heat. That's it. Okay. So for chemists, if you want to make something happen, what will you do? You can add different reactants so that a reaction uh, originally would not occur, will go somewhere because you add more chemicals in the system. Or very often in chem in chemistry, we add heat to a system. We light it up. We raise the temperature. Right? Okay. This is how we control the the, the, uh, the chemical systems. And actually, more generally, heat is among the the, the uh, first or the very 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 uh, primitive way that we know to and we we, we human human beings know to control materials, we, we heat things up, right? We cook our food. It's a form of a change driven by energy change. Of course, historically, this uh, thermodynamics divide, di was developed um, uh, because of the uh, advance of a heat engine and uh, um, the, the, the industrial revolution, right? So it changes our everyday life. Now, and so this is how thermal, thermal means heat, generates dynamics, changes. Another set of keyword regards is the, 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 the subject that thermodynamics concerns, okay? So I specifically pointed out that thermodynamics concerns microscopic equilibrium states. So this actually is from our everyday experience because in our everyday experience, we know that if we, we prepare a system, we prepare something, initially this thing, the property of this thing will change as a function of time. But eventually, eventually it will go to some, well, some, 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 some uh, state meaning a well-defined behavior of the system emerges, okay? So if you have a, a cup of water and put this water at a constant temperature, you control the environment. So the temperature is controlled at 25 degrees Celsius, okay? And regardless of how you initially prepare this water, you might actually prepare this cup of water from uh, some ice cubes. So you start it with the uh, zero temperature. Or if you start it with uh, some boiled water, so it's initially temperature it was uh, 100 degrees Celsius. But in the end, when it reaches 25 degrees Celsius, and then you go on to measure the properties of this cup of water, then regardless of how it's been prepared in the end, it's all sorts of properties will be the same, okay? So the importance of this is, in our everyday life, we see systems eventually goes to some equilibrium. So this is equilibrium, equilibrium. And equilibrium, uh, I, I think I don't need to write down its definition, okay? So equilibrium means the system is in a certain thermodynamic state. 
with its properties independent of time and having no thrust. Okay. Having no thrust is important. Otherwise, it's a stationary state instead of an equilibrium state. So you, it, because it's, it's, it's properties it become time dependence, you do any measurement, regardless of when you measure it, if it's still in the same state, then you will measure the same result. This is equilibrium. So equilibrium state is called microscopic, such kind of a microscopic equilibrium state is called thermodynamic state. Thermodynamic state. Okay. They are very spatial states because those equilibrium states are actually spatial states. Okay. Because they are defined by a few variables, a few variables. And those variables are state called state variables. So the next key concept is state variables. Okay. I think you, you all will have learned this in undergraduate thermodynamic. And in NTU it will be PCAN one. Okay. Okay. So thermodynamics are thermodynamic states, those equilibrium states. They must be macroscopic. Macroscopic means there are many, many degrees of freedom. This degrees of freedom number is huge, enormous. It's 10 to the 20, 23 degrees of freedom. Uh, degrees of freedom. Okay. And they constitute a state, means it's something stable, uh, it well defined. You can uh, actually measure its properties. And now, when you measure its properties, you know that any properties of this system. So X here will be some uh, uh, state variable. And any property, any property of a thermodynamic state will be controlled by a few state variables. So any properties I was use, uh, you know, for example, A is some observable. And this A observable will be this function of those state variables. And those state variables are actually only a few. Degrees of freedom. I should actually spell it up. E E G R E E S of freedom. And degrees of freedom later on, I will write as D O F. Okay. So this S constitutes only a few degrees of freedom. For example, this water example, we know that if we fix the, temp uh, the temperature, we fix the number of particles in this water system. We fix the pressure in this water system. Then the state of the water will be fixed, okay? You prepare the same the water you prepare water in the same temperature, the same pressure, you measure its density in Taiwan, in America, in anywhere, it will be the same. Not just density, all properties, all thermodynamic properties will be the same yes. for this state. So any thermodynamic property will be now just the number of particles, pressure and temperature. Okay. And this and this, uh, and this number of particle, pressure, temperature are state variables. Are state variables. Okay. And they, they, what, what, why are, uh, why are they special? Because they are experimentally controllable. So, They are experimentally, they're basically, they are the knobs we can tune in this experiment. So this statement, now, if I write it down like this, this became a mathematical statement. This mathematical form, mathematical statement says that if you given number of particles and the pressure and the temperature, the properties of a thermodynamic system will be uniquely defined. Okay. So the total derivative mathematically, from your calculus course class, you now know that 
the total derivative of a, so any changes in a will become a function of n and p and t. Now, we start with a many, many, a microscopic system with many, many degrees of freedom and go all the way to be able to describe the average. So this is potential value, so it must be some average observable. You go from 10 to 23 degrees or more particles, actually more than this magnitude of uh, order of magnitudes of degrees of freedom to just a few degrees of freedom. So this reduction in degrees of freedom is enormous. And that's the importance of this, uh, some, this thermodynamic state. Okay. And the only possible when the system is in equilibrium state. If the system is in non-equilibrium state, meaning the, 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 it can be anything. So you can, you do not obey this uh, def, uh, well defined by a few variable statements. So the unequivalent states are, are different, are different. Now this is for a given state. And we know that for any system in our real day, uh, everyday life, if you give the system enough time, eventually it will relax. You give a system enough time, and have the system uh, co have contact with a heat bath that is constant in temperature, then eventually the system will go to some equilibrium state. And this equilibrium state will be defined by a few, a few state variables. So this is very important. So now this is a state, so a point in a state space. So next will be state space. So all these states collect together from a set of a possible thermodynamic states, okay? And this set of a possible thermodynamic states constitutes or gives rise to a state space. Sometimes we say this is a phase space of this thermodynamic system. So if we use NPT case, okay, so if you have a fixed n, we know that many, many properties will be uh, independent of the number of particles. For example, density is such a property. Later on, we will have a more rigorous discussion on this uh, regarding Euler's homogeneous function uh, theory. Now, if you fix n, the only properties will be p and t. So you can actually draw a p and t in this became a two dimensional map as a function. Now, each point, any point, this P and T, any point will be an equilibrium. An EQI, ALI, B, U, and equilibrium state or a small dynamic state. Okay. And this small dynamic state will have uh, A and it will be a function of P and T, okay? So in principle, you can, for example, if we can use a color map to show the function A as a function of P and T, so each point will have different color, meaning it has different observable values, okay? Sometimes you can use a three-dimensional map to map this out. Anyway, so we can understand this properties, some of the properties as functions in state space. And more importantly, in this state space, each point is an equilibrium state. So if we draw a line, we draw any line in equilibrium. I B I U M equilibrium state space. This became a path. Became a path. And a path actually means a change of a state, a change of state. So we can actually go from state one to state two. 
state one to state two. This became a process. So a pass is a process. A somewhat dynamic process means you go, you control those knobs, control your system to make the system go from one somewhat dynamic state, one equilibrium state to another somewhat dynamic state. Okay, so this pass will connect to somewhat dynamic pass. Now, the way I draw this line, I mean, I meant that it goes through all those points and each point is a equilibrium state. So any point with this line, with, with on this line is in equilibrium at a different pressure and different temperature. Okay. So all points on this line is a uh, equilibrium state and this kind of a pass or this kind of a process is spatial. We call this reversible process, reversible. So this process, because the way I draw it here, all the points, all points are equilibrium states. So reversible process are process that in which, in which all the intermediate states are in equilibrium. Okay. This is a, a hypothetical. Oh, hypothetical. Pass. Because a true reversible process cannot be uh, realized. Okay. Imagine how you go to from this one to two on this on, on, on this map. What you have to do is you need to control your system at this given P and T first, and then you change P gradually or you change T gradually. Okay. And have an assistant, have an assistant, uh, kind of a follow, follow this line. This process, if you make the change very small, it can be realized. If you make the change bigger than, you know, a, a little bit bigger, then the system can easily jump to a non equilibrium state and it's no longer a reversible pass. So the requirement for a reversible pass from one to two in order to make all the point in equilibrium because going to equilibrium, this realization process, going to equilibrium takes time. So it takes time. And each step you have to go a very small step to prevent the system going to a non-equilibrium state. So you go a very small step and you need to take time for the system to relax. In the end, you need to have a very, very, very long time. You need to make this change very, very small, slow, slow, in order to realize a reversible process. But you cannot be slow enough all the time, all the time. Meaning, usually you can do as slow as you can and make the process as close to an equilibrium state, as close to a reversible process as you can, but it's still not exactly the reversible process. Luckily or fortunately, in uh, some of, in chemistry, in chemistry, many processes are intrinsically sort of uh, uh, close to reversible. Okay. So these processes are, for example, for you know, slow reactions. For example, vaporization, vaporization, vaporization. Okay. Or melting. Because during boiling process, you can you the temperature will be fixed. Okay. And you system stay in uh a, a, a two phase coexistent state, which is a equilibrium state. So if you have a system evaporize slowly, so this process is very close to uh, reversible. A slow reaction because it's slow, so, so the change is small and uh, the reaction time is slow, so the environment heat redistribution it has always have time to reach it. 
so it can be considered as a sort of a, a reversible process. All process such like a slow heat up, you have a prepare system. You add heat, small amount of heat in it, gradually raise its temperature. That's okay. That's something you can uh, very close to reversible. There are more. Oh, later, if we uh, see it, we can. Uh, I will point it out to you. Okay. So these are fundamentals ideas of uh, thermodynamics. Thermodynamics is uh, experimental empirical science. It comes from it came from our everyday life. So what I just state, what I just said, are actually in our everyday life, and I just simply formalize it and uh, kind of point out this very essential, very key problems that are uh, very key properties that state variables are con uh, equilibrium properties of a system of a system is controlled by a few state variables. So this mathematical statement is actually very important for the study or for the uh, kind of a rigorous formation of the thermodynamics. And will be something that we rely on all the time. Okay, any questions here? No? Okay, we will move on. So, those are some basic terms that I want you to uh, get familiar with. And now we can start to talk about laws of thermodynamics. So can anyone tell me how many laws of a thermodynamics have you learned before? How many? Come on. Four. Turn off. What? Four. How many? Four. Four. Okay. Four. So uh, first law, second law, third law, fourth law, or what? And zero. Oh, yeah, there is a zero law of thermodynamics. Okay, and let's forget about zero law. Zero law defines temperature and uh, uh, allows this allow us to to de define equilibrium state. So thermal equilibrium. So that's the functionality of zero law. But we here we start with some with this our everyday experience that we no system will reach a thermal uh, dynamic dynamic equilibrium eventually. And a constant temperature is required. And we don't know what, what is temperature yet, but some property, constant temperature, will be required in this process. So we'll focus on three laws of thermodynamics. Okay. Okay. So what are the three laws of thermodynamics? So I ask you to look it up in your homework, right? So I I, I don't know, maybe you have a day, you have done it, maybe you have not. Uh, doesn't matter, but many of you should know, should be able to recall the three laws of thermodynamics. What's the first law of thermodynamics? First one, what's the first one? Entropy. 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 conservation. Yes, energy conservation. And what's the second law of thermodynamics? Somebody else, please. Come on. What is the second law of thermodynamics? Nobody? Oh, I will be so disappointed. Come on. Ah. Nobody volunteer. They talk about entropy. And yeah, it's about entropy. Can you be more specific about entropy? What 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 entropy? Uh what entropy what entropy i mean the law itself it entropy entropy of the yes. universe uh, always increases not decreases never decreases. great 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 yeah that's the second law of thermodynamics so it regards entropy and it regards a nature uh, the, the change of uh, overall entropy in a nature process so when you see a process occurred 
then the entropy of the universe must increase, right? Second law, okay. And if you look it up, you will see different forms of second law. The second law sometimes is stated as a, a heat would never flow from a low temperature body to a high temperature body. There's also a second law, okay? This is another state of second law. It's a, a, it, at constant pressure and constant temperature, gives free energy will decrease in the natural process. This is also a second law. And they are all valid and they are all the same, actually. And we will have what's first, second, and what is the third law? Come on. Third law of someone else. Also, Please. also talk uh, about entropy also. Yes, and uh, about entropy what? So yeah. the crystal will be uh, uh, most uh, the entropy of the most of the crystal will be zero k. Uh, will will be zero zero, zero k. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great, great, great. Okay, so it's re it regards the entropy of uh, a system at zero k. Okay, so the, if the system is in its most stable state. At zero K, the entropy will be zero. And this third law allows us to define absolute entropy. So in physics, absolute energy or any kind of energy, as through uh, enthalpy, as through internal en energy, as absolute free energy, is a meaningless because you learn in high school that to define energy, you need to define a zero energy point and you can actually change the zero energy point anywhere. Uh, without affecting the any physical phenomena, but entropy is special. Entropy can be defined with an absolute value, and that means it can be calculated from some fundamental properties of the system. We uh, re, no, there's no need to refer to its environment or whatever. So, yeah, I think most of you or all of you already know. Or already learned three laws of thermodynamics. And what we are going to do here is actually to present a formulation of a, 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 a kind of a, a formulation that we sort of unified all the three laws of thermodynamics and allow us to more effectively calculate or qu quantitatively using these three laws. So I want you to focus on things not just you know or you can write down the three law of thermodynamics. You need to understand what is the physics of these laws. The physics, the physics. And this, there, there are more important points than just saying, Okay, first law is about energy conservation, but there are more to it, and I want to point this out to you. Okay, so the physics and what is the mathematics? Mathematics of laws. So here I want to give you a mathematical uh, foundation for thermodynamics, and the many useful results can then be derived from mathematics. But remember, mathematics is just tool, it's, just, it's a tool, okay? It does not, it, it's used to represent the physics, but it's not the physics. So you should always know the physics before you know the mathematics, so the derivations are important. You need to be able to utilize those mathematical te techniques, okay? And also this, in this course, I want you to advance your mathematical skills okay, to learn some mathematics, but, but it's always after physics. Okay. Then you need to know how is each law useful. Okay, and what can be derived? Hmm. 
one then. All time are very limited. Actually in this advanced phase course, I'm going to teach only the most useful things. Okay. But the, how they are useful depends on your research, depends on your own interest, depends on how you envision yourself uh, doing research. So you need to always ask this, okay, this is what I learned, this is what the teachers taught me, and then how it, is it useful to me? Okay. Our time is very limited, our life is short. We could only have those time, a very limited time to learn things. So uh, it's better that we learn things that are useful. Okay. So think about this and uh, make connections between those fundamental rules that I uh, present in this course and your own research. That will be, that that then you can be um, you will be more prepared and you will understand more about uh, those those fundamental rules uh, principles that we are going to cover. Okay, and what can be derived from then actually is more about applications how how we utilize those rules. So I want you to not just learn what is what. Okay, you need to learn what the physics and how we can describe each law with rigorous mathematics and how is each law useful and how can we apply those things we learn here in our uh, real research. Okay, so I will start with the first law. So the physics, the, the you know, physics of the first law on the face course is uh, energy conservation. So normally the first law will be described as conservation of the energy. And the, the mathematics, mathematically, mathematically, we often write down this equation to describe the first law. So DE equals to DQ plus D okay. You must have <laughs> seen this before, okay? So E here is the internal energy of the system, internal energy. Q here is heat transferred to the system. We are chemists, we take a system uh, oriented view of the world. So when we talk about heat, we talk about heat flow into the system. So heat the system gained or heat transferred to the system. And also when we talk about work, W is work, work down on the system. So if our gas system is being compressed, compressed means the environment must do work on the system so that the internal energy of the system will increase. Okay. So it's DW will uh, positive. positive. So heat and uh, the work, their sign, if a positive means it's going into the system. If it's negative, it's going outside of the system. So it's the reverse. So heat transfer from the system to its environment will be a negative sign. So here, plus and the negative actually directs the directionality. Yeah, means the directionality. And you must be curious. Oh no, actually you know it <laughs> already. Here we have this D. Of course, this D here, DE here means just like in calculus, is a, a small amount of a change small amount change. But this D slash is a special sign, D 
preferably in some dynamics, it means uh, in exact, in exact differential. This is differential, differential. Okay. And this D slash is in exact differential. And we specifically put this slash on DQ and DW because heat and the work are not state variables. They are related or they are connected with a process, not a state. And this process, during the process, heat and work can be different if you go from state one to state two from different process. So I will illustrate this using this kind of a map again P and T, which means state one to state two and uh, pass with this is pass one, this is pass two, or I'll say pass A, pass B. And you you go from pass A to or pass B will you can have different Q and uh, W. Okay. So you here you have a QA and Q W uh, and Q A and W A. The total heat you gain going from uh, state one to state two, and the total work, the total work performed on the system from state one to state two, going through pass A. And pass B, you can have QB or WB. And actually QA and QB need not be the same. They can be the same, but normally they do not need to be the same. WA and WB, their work do not need to be the same. But QA plus WA, this gives us the energy delta E, delta E will be the same with QB plus WB. Because E internal energy is a state variable. Actually it's a state function, so I should say more clearly say it's a state function. So what energy will be a function of like in this case, MPT. Okay. I know you must already know this and just try to review this for you so that we can all uh, be on the same page. Okay. And now let's go back to, can we calculate these two quantities? Oh, heat and work. Yeah, yes, we can. Yes, we can. So this work, this work will always be some force times some change in this in, in some uh, variable. In some variable. So this will be some displacement. This displacement. This will be some sort of a force. And I have this quote unquote, because in general, in general, mechanical, not only mechanical force can do work, many different force, many different force can perform work on your system. Okay, so mechanical PV work, for example, PV work will be a mechanical. Mechanical work, of course, yeah. you have a force times some change, some displacement, some change. Okay, actually, actually also quote unquote displacement also. Okay, so you, you have a, a car here, you push the car, okay? Then you do work and how much, how much work you do? Depends on the force you push the car and how the length, the distance it travels. And of course, if you want to get some 
uh, W, normally we do, say, we do not say DW because W itself is a uh, difference. It always relate, always associated with a process. So when we say walk, it always has to be going from one state to another state. So it will be going from one state one to state two, and you have this force times dl. A mechanical force can very easily be reflected in PV work. And in PV work, this dW will be some pressure, and always the external pressure of a system times the change in volume, and there's a negative sign to this, because when the volume decreases, the environment perform work on the system. When the volume increases, when this dV is positive, then the system perform work on the environment, and in that case, the W must be negative. So you have this negative sign here. And of course, in this case, then your W will be going from one to two, then minus P, minus T, V. So this is the general case. If we furthermore restrict this condition in a reverse ball, in a reverse ball case, uh, and we consider this the ideal case, system. And reverse one means it's always in equilibrium. So PV equals to NRT must be true all the time. This is the uh, uh, equation of states. Equilibrium state must satisfy this equation. For ideal gas, for ideal gas. Then in that case, this W became one to two minus P can be represented with V, so V and T, D, V. Now you can furthermore go on to, okay, if T is constant, or if T and V satisfy some special condition, and you can actually uh, calculate this work, but we're not going to go that far, okay? And if you are, you don't remember, or you seem uh, unfamiliar with this, go to NTU Cool. I have uh, uploaded a uh, lecture note on how do we calculate thermodynamic properties and how do we follow thermodynamic processes in there. So please go there, uh, take a look at my lecture note. Okay, I'm not going, not going to go further here. And there are actually more. Okay. For example, chemical work. Chemical work depends on chemical potential and the change in the uh, number of particles in the system, molarity of the system, okay? So this will be how do you calculate chemical work. We can have an electrical work. Electrical work. And electrical work will be calculated from, you will have some uh, electrical potential change or you you will define as electric motive force right as a v, v. and you have some change change in charge transferred charge in there this is electrical work so this displacement actually means any some variables this variable can change as a function of the number of uh, something, number of particles, chemical particles, volume, num number of uh, the size of a volume, things like that, and uh, a force associated with, with it. So each thing here actually associated with a form of uh, energy. So we now realize that in this world, we have different forms of energy. We can perform work in various forms, okay? This is a part of work. And everything goes into the work is something well-defined. 
So far is heat. Heat is energy that cannot be categorized as work. So heat is actually not work. Not a regular form of energy. Not an energy that's be clearly defined by a displacement or a variable. A displacement. There. So, so they are called heat. So the first law, all right, here again, the E equals the W plus U. Actually, in a sense, could be more physically, uh, sort of a physically meaningful, be rewrite as DW equals to, uh, sorry, DQ. equals to the E minus W. So it, it allows us to quantify it, quantify it, heat, amount of heat, or to, uh, a way to present this is, if you want to change the internal energy of a system, you either do work, or you have a heat transfer in the in the process, in the process. And in some cases, heat transfer can be easily seen. For example, in the uh, when temperature is different. But in some cases, the heat transfer is more implicit. So the heat transfer amount of heat transferred has to be calculated from the change in energy minus the uh, work done in this process. And what's important now for the first law is, now it tells us that energy can enter exchange. So energy can convert. Energy can be converted to other forms. This work has many different forms of energy in it. This is a special form called heat. It's a disorder energy, it's something that we uh, cannot directly control. But as long, once they become the internal energy, they can be converted again into another form of energy. So first law, not only tell us the fundamental principle of uh, conservation of energy. It actually tells us, and this is more important physics in the first law of thermodynamics. It tells us that we can convert one form of energy to another form. As long as this conservation of energy, the first law is being uh, conserved. I mean, it's been uh, followed. And this is, actually a very important aspect in thermodynamics because in the end you will realize that everything thermodynamics talks about is the interconversion of energy, one form of energy to another form of energy, and what kind of a process, what kind of a physical phenomena can be induced by this uh, con uh, conversion of energy. Okay, so this is what I have to say about first law. Later on, we will go back to this and use the more um, basically fundamental equation of, 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 of thermodynamics dynamics to describe the first law. Okay, so it's uh, 2.15. I'll stop here. Uh, it's online, so it's kind of a meaningless to have a long 10 minutes break. I'll have a short break, okay? But then I will uh, end the lecture, end the class a little bit early uh, than the original uh, 3, 310 time. I think we will do this. And maybe five minutes will be quite enough for everybody. So we'll have a five minutes break. We'll come back at 2.20, 2.20, okay? Okay, and think about it. If you have any question, you can uh, ask a question in the, you know, when we start our uh, second part of this work.
Okay, good. Okay, so let's uh, continue our discussion here. I think the for the first law for the first law of thermodynamics, my uh, I think the, the 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 key point I want to point out is that uh, it does not only uh, tells us the an idea of conservation of energy. So energy conservation is a well known me me uh, mechanics law. So it's actually not really new. What's important? is it also tells us that energy can be converted from one form to another, one form to another, from heat to work, to different forms of work, okay, from PV work to uh, electricity, whatever. Yeah, so that's a more important part of this. Okay. Any questions? Hello. Uh, that's the problem of uh, giving lecture online. I never know what's, yeah. I have a question. Okay, so the next part will be a second law of thermodynamics, and this is actually the majority, the focus of this. Advanced physical chemistry one course, so second law. And here I will directly quote David Chandler's definition. So the goal here is to not introduce second law from empirical experimental results. That's a traditional convention, conventional way of doing thermodynamics. And in the lecture note I uploaded to uh, until cool, I clearly, or I hope, okay, I hope I have clearly uh, present this that point of view, okay, from Clausius' uh, equation and how this uh, entropy can be realized and defined uh, by the use of uh, Carnot cycle to do this. So, but in 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 this stage, I want to you know make some of them as uh, some sort of uh, ancient theory theory. That means. I will give a uh, basic statements of statement uh, of uh, thermodynamics. Okay. There are laws, so I can tell you. Okay, this is how the uh, physical world operate, and just follow it, and we can get all the results we need. So, in this perspective, the, the definition of second law is the kernel, the the key here. Okay, and according to David Chandler. He gave this statement. There is an extensive state function S. Okay. This state function S is a function of energy, and all the state variables define this thermodynamic uh, system. Okay. And this function is which is a monotonically monotonic increasing function of E. So as you increase the energy, internal energy of a system, the function of this S of the system must increase, must increase. Okay. And if state B is a theoretically accessible from state A, then 
entropy of a state B must greater or equals to entropy of a state A. This is the statement for the second law of thermodynamics uh, given by David Chandler. And to understand this statement or the power, powerfulness of this statement, we need to first understand a few keywords here. First, a state is something kind of in comparison with intensive, intensive, intensive. Intensive means it's a, a, a property of resistance that is independent of size. So intensive independent, independent of size here, I will always use N, number of particles to define. It. So a property that is independent of the number of particles is called intensive. And then if the uh, the property, the function, state function, state property is extensive, man, means it's proportional. It goes like n. It's proportional. It has to be proportional. Proportional. Okay. With n. With n. So means we'll write this down more rigorously. Then this. No, no it's okay. Proportional to n. So as you increase the number of particles, this property has to increase proportionally to number of particles. This is extensive. So if you double the number of particles, the value of the quantity will be doubled, strictly doubled. This is extensive. So intensive versus extensive, this is important. And this state function S, of course, is called entropy. It's entropy. is an extensive function. Energy is also extensive. You have a, a thermodynamic system, you double the size, the energy, total energy doubled, right? Density is intensive because you double the size. The density remains the same. Okay. Heat, uh, heat capacity is extensive and heat, a specific heat is intensive. Okay, think about it. Think about it. But here we specifically state that this entropy is extensive. Entropy is extensive. Now, this in extensive function called entropy is a monotonically increasing function of energy. So when energy increases, it always increases. This is what we mean. And if A is B is as diabetically accessible from A, so adiabatically, adiabatically means no heat transfer. No heat transfer. And this is how we can do to control heat. We can isolate, we can insulate the system so that the system do not have any exchange of heat with its environment. And in that case, we know the system will have a DQ is equals to zero and there's no heat transfer and we call this adiabatic process. So we can, you can adiabatic accessible. So without heat transfer, Q equals to Q So without, without heat transfer, you can go from state B to state A, then state B must have a larger, larger uh, uh, entropy. S. Okay. So this the second statement, or actually third statement, there are three statements here. The third statement, the, the last one, can be rewritten in this statement. Okay. For nature, nature irreversible. A diabetic, a diabetic. A diabetic is important here, okay, process. Then it's delta S.
must be greater or equals to zero. I think state B is a, a diabetic accessible from A, so we can go from A to B. A goes from B in a, a diabetic process. So this change is a, a diabetic change. In this case, this entropy change. So as A, S, B greater or equals to A, a natural process, irreversible, this will be irreversible, this will be always greater than the uh, the equal case means it's reversible and this s is entry so if two states are reversibly and uh, diabetically accessible we can freely convert from a to b then they must have the same entropy this is this for this statement Diabetic. Delta S equals to zero. Delta S equals to zero means S A equals to S B. Because delta S in our case, you going from A to B, so delta S will be S B minus S A. The entropy of your product minus the entropy of your so the consequence of this statement is profound because from this statement we can derive many useful things. So let's go and look at it one by one. First, so S E X is a state function. State function. So if you give at E your energy and you give all the uh, state variables defined as small dynamic state, then S will be well defined. You can you can calculate, you should be able to calculate S. Calculate S. This means the total derivative of S. We call this DS. So now this is from calculus. Just from the principles of calculus, we know that your ds, a very, very small change only related to its linear, its slope of the change. So you will be partial. As partial means now you have many, many uh, degrees of freedom. So it's a multi variable uh, calculus. You use partial, partial as partial e at fixed x times de plus partial s partial x and this e times dx because s is a function of e and s so this must be true now there is a caveat or they, they pay attention to this notation because here this term s can actually be a vector so at this we know that it will be p and p and t should go in here in there. So x is a vector. It's, there are more than one variables in this x. But here I write this down like this as if it's a single variable. But remember in in actually throughout the channel this book or throughout this course, when we use this notation, we imply we imply that there are many x. So you have s1, s2. S3, da, 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 da. Again, each S actually is related to a form of energy. Yeah. We have many X. So this D, this notion, not, notation here actually means you have a summation, all forms of X, all forms of energy. So summation I, you have partial S, partial X, I, E, x j not equals to i fixed dsi okay. so it actually multi-variable not just a single variable but for simplicity the concept uh, while keeping the concept simple we will use this more concise representation unless necessary sometimes when it's necessary we will expand this 
but if it's not necessary, this means it will be uh, this concise version will be used. Okay, it's okay. So we can write down the total differential, total derivative. So total derivative of s because it's a state function. Now. The second part of the statement, a monotonically S is a monotonically increasing function of E. So the second part of the statement says that when E increased, S increased. What does this mean? This means that partial S, partial E, now of course S must be fixed, will be greater or equal to zero with a monotonic uh, we do not say strictly uh, increasing, so it do not have to be increasing all the time, but must be positive or need or or or, or, or zero. Okay. So this became a spatial kind of a, a spatial positive spatial positive uh, quantity, and we can define this quantity as something later on and actually. By comparison to many experiments, we know that we can define a quantity to describe this. This quantity is called temperature. We define temperature as partial E, so inverse of this. So this will be the inverse temperature, and this will be temperature. So will be temperature. So so this gives a formal definition. Over temperature in thermodynamics. And if we kind of uh, uh, connect this to what we have learned, so this tells us that. For a reversible process with, with work equals to zero. If we can do a reversible process without doing any work, then in this case, in this case, this energy difference will be just like your reversible heat in this process. And if because now you we have to choose a specific uh, path, and along this specific path, path, this is a reversible path. So along this specific path, everything is well defined. It's all in equilibrium. So this kind of in exact differential can be uh, regarded as a exact differential along this path, along this path. So this does not need to have a uh, slash there, we can actually say this is the DQ reversible. Okay. So use this definition. If we take a derivative of this with that with regard, uh, we so if we now uh, take this definition here and say okay so now your energy ds should be your temperature and then you plug in here here okay. so replace e so e e equals to ds times t so what do we have we have a ds equals to t dq. This is the definition of entropy that you normally see in a thermodynamic textbook. So this entropy can be defined. Oh, sorry, sorry, this temperature can be defined as when you change entropy, when you change entropy, how energy changes. As a function of entropy, and it's actually it's inverse. So inverse temperature is more naturally defined. It's when you 
change energy. You can put a mount, put, uh, you can change a, the internal energy of a system. A phone to do this is to use reversible process and the heat to do this. Okay. So you add heat to your system and the, the entropy or change in entropy will depends on the change in, in energy and the inverse temperature, inverse temperature. So what we, are, what we are trying to say here is, you can consider this equation, this form, inverse temperature. And this inverse temperature, this form tells us that if we change the energy through some heat and you can measure, change in entropy and this is this equation and this is how the entropy was originally defined and the third part of the natural process a to b goes through a dear medic state and delta has equals to Sb minus Sa must be greater or equals to zero. This equal sign happens when it's reversible process. And this is a very um, actually important process uh, statement because it defines, defines the the rationality, rationality of a natural process or spontaneous and this is a very useful form in thermodynamics allow us to determine the rationality of a reaction in undergraduate thermodynamics very often we emphasize on this point but in graduate level, we emphasize more on calculating or more quantitatively connecting different thermodynamic properties. So we will not. Um, in the homework, you can you will see problems about this, but we will not emphasize too much on this. And the division actually has a different uh, perspective to talk about this. We will use the later on. Okay. Now we have considered more properties of entropy. So recall this first property, this total derivative of entropy. From this total derivative of entropy, you know, we'll try to derive some useful uh, things. So the total derivative of entropy can be written as partial S, partial E, S, E, E partial s, partial x, e, e, s. This is the uh, first lecture, so I'm trying to do this slowly. And later on, you will find uh, me kind of well, picking up the path. So try to follow, and you, if you, later on, if I go in faster and faster, if you cannot follow, or you have ideas that are unclear, Again, please interrupt me, okay? Okay. So for a reversible process along a path, we know, we know that the first law tells us, the first law, so this is a total derivative of S from this property S is a function of E and S. And first law, first law of a thermodynamics tells us your energy difference must be your so, reversible. This reversible force times displacement. This is from first law, this is the work, this is Q. Now I remove the slash because now I define it specifically along a reversible path. When a path is determined 
and this reversible path means it goes through all well-defined thermodynamic state. There's no non-equilibrium state. So this Q and uh, force, everything will be well behaved. You you now have this derivative property here. So it now became a uh, real derivative, exact derivative. So the force depends on the path and uh, 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 and it became now no longer a free variable. This is strictly follow this reversible path. And if we use this reversible E into the equation above, above, we can write now ds, we combine these two reaction, combine these two properties, equations. We now have a ds equals to HS, HE. DE became DQ. I do it slowly. Plus F R E V D X plus partial S partial S E D S. So this is we get regarding D S. This is also regards D S. So we will combine these two terms. Now this became partial S partial E S Q specifically reversible pass plus partial s f times ds i'm doing very i'm doing very simple mathematics so i just move the terms around now the key here is this expression holds for all reversible processes. It does not depend on which reversible. We choose a reversible process. Regardless of which reversible process you choose, this equation must hold, so this is true. Okay. All reversible processes. Yes. And in that case, we consider a spatial reversible adiabatic process. So we can go from a uh, state state A to state B while we insulate the whole system. So it must be also true for adiabatic reversible processes. We're going from a more general form to a more specific form. So it must be true for a more specific form if this equation is general. But if we, for a given a diabetic process, dq is zero. So this term is zero. This term is zero. But this also be, must be true for all the all, uh, uh, reversible process. Uh, a diabetic reversible process, we know that from this third part of uh, Delta Chandler's third law, we know that the delta S or DS must be zero. Which means this is zero, this is zero. No, this must be zero. So we now have a question about the property. The property. We now have uh, partial S, partial X, S to E, that's my energy, plus partial S, partial E, to X, plus F, reverse equals to zero. So partial S, partial X, plus E, minus, minus partial S, partial E, plus some reversible force, force, some force in a reversible setup. It must be true for all reversible cases. So this state, this part, this statement 
must be true. And the second part of uh, David Chandler's statement tells us that this must be positive. This must be positive. So, delta E. And we have also defined temperature. And this will be inverse temperature. Let me go back to take a, take a look, take a peek E as a case. So this is one of the T. So we have uh, plug in this. We have uh, partial S, partial S, it's the energy. So for a reversible process, for a reversible process, we go back to this delta s we go back we go back to here so we then derive delta s ds equals to one over T E E from here. From here, definition of a temperature. And this part, this part can be converted to minus F divided by T. So this will be plus minus In view of ds so we plug in this result into the total derivative of entropy and we find this and this equation can be rearranged rearranged because we have this one over t one over t is not very uh, pleasant to see so we multiply both and both part by t and then move this fi vds to the left hand side and then we put this uh, uh, from left to head, uh, left to right. So we have a DE equals to TDS plus F inverse for work. DS. And well, of course, I already mentioned that this is actually a vector not just one variable many variables so if we now consider if we now consider pv work how many depends on how many x variables in x depends on how many forms of energy so again i emphasize that the first of all, thermodynamics emphasizes energy can be interconverted between different types of work of works okay so if we have a pv work also, we have a chemical work. That means you have a minus P dV and uh, mu dN in this series. So in that case, you have a dE equals to T dS minus P dV plus mu and of course, you can have a multiple components. This n can be n1, n2, n3, da, da, da. This is the fundamental equation, the most important fundamental equation of thermodynamics. What I just showed you is that with 
first law of thermodynamics and uh, David Chandler's statement. This second law of thermodynamics. So this second law of thermodynamics, this statement here, and this statement here. We can mathematically or rigorously derive a equation that connects energy, total derivative of energy, change in energy, change in entropy, and uh, changes in other types, other thermodynamic variables. So this equation allows us to follow the change in energy or the change in entropy in terms of uh, the controllable, experimentally controllable thermodynamic variables. So if you know the, you want to know the total change in energy, you integrate this equation, you get what you want. And this controls, this governs everything in thermodynamics. Okay. Now I will have a very short discussion. I will only talk about it here. Okay. The third law of a solar dynamics then is actually a, a, a principle that cannot be explained by uh, classical mechanics. It requires quantum mechanics and it requires microscopic definition of entropy. So later on when we introduce uh, Boltzmann's equation for entropy, we will very naturally obtain third law. The idea is for most, chem uh, for most systems, mo material systems, at the zero temperature means the system is in a ground state. If the ground state is unique, then the system at the zero temperature must be exist in its ground state 100%, no other probability. Okay. If there is a probability of going to some static state, then it's not zero temperature. Zero temperature means strictly it's in ground state, it stays in ground state. And if the system have a unique ground state, that means the system have only one configuration, one possibility. And that means there's no entropy, there's no disorder in this system. If you use uh, Boltzmann's equation, so the nature log of uh, the, the uh, number of uh, states defines the entropy. The, if you have a, a single one state, number of state equals to one, entropy is zero. So the third law, third law of thermodynamics can be naturally derived from quantum mechanics and the definition, uh, and the given definition of zero K temperature. And that will uh will discuss a little bit further later, but not uh, in this stage. Okay. So from next lecture on, we will focus on how we utilize, how we use this fundamental law of thermodynamics to connect uh, different thermodynamic properties to calculate some uh, useful thermodynamic uh, functions. Okay. Uh, Oh, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll say it. So you and combine this with legenda transform to define various uh, thermodynamic free energy functions. And so I'll tell you this equation, this equation gives all the quantitative, not qualitative, all the quantitative uh, thermodynamic relationships. Okay, so I think today I'll stop here. Yeah, it's a good, good, good uh, time and uh, position to stop. Any questions? Okay, so recall we did not say okay. It's, you we start Professor? with this. Uh, could you yes, uh, please see again the definition of the reverse ball. Reverse ball means during a process. During the process, this path, this path goes through uh, this path. There are many. Okay, so we from state one to state two, A to B, A to B, right? Yeah. And uh, it's a process, so it takes time. So during the process, the system must experience many, many different states, right? Yeah. So if all the states are equilibrium, then it's a reversible process. Oh, 
Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm. Thank okay. you. So all the paths, all the paths go through a equilibrium point, equilibrium state that is reversible. And this is actually a, a hypothetical process. It's a hypothetical condition. It requires that we make the change very, very slowly. If you make a change, make a fast, rapid change, then the system will always go to a non equilibrium state and then it's no longer reversible. Is that okay? Okay, no problem. Okay. Anything else? Okay, so anyway, anyway, think about it, okay? And if you have any questions, write down your question and I, you can ask questions next time before we begin our lecture, okay? okay. So we'll stop here and uh, uh, we'll continue on Thursday morning, okay? See you then. Bye-bye.